What is going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for week one of the Pokemon Premier League. Now, this is just going to be a relatively short team builder that I'm going to have. Let me know if you guys will prefer a little bit longer and in depth and before the actual battle video or a little bit shorter and more digestible and uh, and as the like attached to the same battle video. I feel like shorter and digestible right before the battle is a little bit easier and I think you'll remember the sets instead of having to watch two separate videos. But I'm interested to hear what you guys think as well. Now for week one, we have a dynamic uh, opponent here going up against Kelly under the radar. Big, big match here week one starting off. I have his team to the right there for you to see. We definitely have our work cut out for us because rain teams are just something that are so hard to play around. And Kelly has drafted so well, he doesn't even necessarily need to bring rain, especially against me. That being said, I definitely see him bringing rain in this matchup. In fact, the Pokemon that I'm going to predict him to bring are going to be the Mega Caesar, the Tornadus. I think he's either going to bring Nidoking or Raikou, Kingdra, Politoed, and Kabutops. And Politoed is misspelled because I put this in word first. There we go. All right, so those are going to be the six that I'm expecting him to bring. But of course, we plan for as many different uh, shenanigans as we can. Let's take a look at the team that I'm bringing. Really, uh, I tried to go unpredictable, especially for week one, while at the same time still having some solid checks and counters. My main unpredictable Pokemon this time is going to be Weavile. Um, what the heck? Maybe's a weird. Weavile is actually going to be Scarfed this week. And that is primarily because a Scarf Weavile can outspeed a max speed Kabutops in the rain by one point. And if Kingdra runs modest, like it is wont to do because its special attack is a little above average, but mediocre compared to a lot of things at base 95, uh, I can outspeed Kingdra in the rain as well. Now, this is very important that I figure out if his Kingdra is timid or modest, if he happens to have rain Swift Swim Kingdra, because if it is timid, he will outspeed and kill my Weavile. Weavile is very, very necessary to get a lot of uh, good hits off against this team. After the Mega Caesar goes down, I can basically two-hit KO every member of his team, except for Miltank, depending on its spread. Unfortunately, I have to run Icicle Crash this week. I would love to run Ice Punch for the accuracy, but then I would miss out on one-hit KOs on Tornadus, and Nidoking, and even possibly Celebi. I don't see him bringing Celebi. But uh, I want to get those one-hit KOs, so Icicle Crash is going to be really, really nice to pick those up. And the Scarf gets me a handy flinch chance as well. Pursuit is really for if I bring in Weavile after his Tornadus kills something, and I know he's gonna be switching out, especially if he knows that I have a Scarf at that point, I can stop him from switching and getting that um, Regenerator boost because the Pursuit will be doing a good amount of damage. Let's take a look at that right now, actually. Now you guys can see here in this quick calc here that uh, without Life Orb, Weavile cannot get the one-hit KO on Tornadus. Uh, unless he's using Icicle Crash. Pursuit does a very solid quarter of his health, so if he just gets down really, really low, I expect him to probably have Life Orb Tornadus for the ability to use Hurricane really easily and also pivot around when you turn. Um, I expect him to have that, especially because he can wall break with it too. But Pursuit's nice to catch that, and he also might be in a position where he's trying to switch Nidoking out as well, so I would like to catch that on the switch too. Now, um, it is nice because if he brings, I'm expecting him to bring either Scarf Nidoking, Raikou, or he could also bring Scarf Tornadus, I don't see that happening. But all those options are outspelled by Weavile too, and Weavile, after especially the main threat there is going to be the Raikou, once those Pokemon take some hits of Stealth Rock or like some hits from Rotom, Volt Switching out, they're in a predicament where they're going to get KO'd by Weavile. So that's really, really nice. He's going to be one of my cleanup Pokemon in this matchup. Now because he just has so many hard hitting special attacking types, we have a specially defensive Gardevoir with leftovers. I brought Trace just to pick up Regenerator perhaps, or even um, to a lesser extent Natural uh, Cure from Celebi. I might pick up Swift Swim, but I don't see that being very useful, but it is good to know that a, uh, I'm a basically completely uninvested Gardevoir Moonblast. That can two hit KO or one hit KO a lot of his Pokemon like Kingdra. 
And even something that resisted, like Nidic King, is still going to take about a chunk of itself and a quarter of itself from it. So excellent, excellent right there. Gardevoir is a nice soft check. The Kingdra in the rain Hydro Pump still hurts, which sucks. I can live one even in the rain. Protect to get my leftovers, and then if he's timid, I'll always live the second one. If he's modest, I have a chance of living the second one. And that's also assuming he hits. Uh, Thunder Wave is also nice to slow down his entire team, barring Nidoking and Raikou, which I don't think Raikou really wants to come in on Gardevoir. Even if it has Shadow Ball, it doesn't do very much damage to the Calm build, and I can chip away at it with Moonblast and recover my HP. Uh, Nidoking is just something where any extra damage is appreciated. Because as soon as I don't have to go for Icicle Crash on it, the better. Um, now, Nidoking is another Pokemon that we have a secondary uh, switch in here. Especially if he's using Thunderbolt or Thunder, which I can see coming. Um, it is important though, and that's actually why I have Ice Shard on my Weavile. In case he tries to run Sucker Punch Nidoking in order to pick up KOs or play around with that speed a little bit. We do have an Adamant Garchomp with Stealth Rocks. So this is one of our possible dedicated leads. Uh, I went Swords Dance with Earthquake and Stone Engine in Adamant Nature because I don't see myself outspeeding his Rain Dance Sweepers anyway, so I might as well just pick up some extra damage. The Speed EV is there to outspeed Max Speed Nidoking, which will also help me out with Mill Tank, which probably won't run Max Speed. And of course, we went Earthquake Stone Edge just in case he brings his to Tugatick, then I can hit that as well. Swords Dance is really nice. If Nidoking goes down, uh, really wants Nidoking and Raikou to go down, that opens up an opportunity for Garchomp to set up. The Ruskin is really, really nice to switch it in um, to force Tornadus to take extra U-turn damage, um, or uh, Mega Caesar more likely because Tornadus would just regenerate that damage too. Um, fortunately, the extra HP also abides me a decent switch in for Kabutops. Uh, Kabutops in the rain is still gonna be hitting significantly hard with Waterfall, but that's more for something like an Aqua Jet that I see coming. I can bring it in there. Uh, it also lets me punish him rapid spinning with his Kabutops. Or uh, if he, I don't think he'll bring Machoke, but it gives me that option too to bring it in there. Um, now our next Pokemon, Rotom. I had a lot of trouble deciding when I was going to run here and if I was going to run Rotom or Magnezone. Rotom has the Yachi Berry just for those ice coverage moves that he might have on Tornadus, Nidoking, Raikou, and Kingdra to a lesser extent Politoed. But uh, Rotom is going to be key here. Not only can he spread Will-O-Wisp around his team, which is great because he doesn't have a fire type. And that's the only way I might see him bringing um, either Machoke or Miltank if he's expecting a lot of uh, status, then he might bring those for Heal Bell or to take advantage with Guts. But like I said, once I get those Pokemon like Raikou down in their HP just a little bit, then it makes it so much easier to clean up. And every little bit of check damage is going to be very crucial here. I do not want to scarf myself though, because Miltank can have Sap Zipper, and of course he has the ground type with Nidoking, um, so I want to be able to punish those switch-ins, and also I want to be able to get my HP back, because I feel like this is going to be a little bit of a battle of attrition. So Pain Split against the likes of Miltank, Politoed, to a lesser extent Kingdra and Mega Caesar is going to be really really nice as, as they come in. It's also notable, I can use Rotom to figure out if Nidoking is scarfed or not, because I will outspeed it by one point, similar to uh, my Garchomp too, so I'll have two different ways to determine that. Uh, Ry uh, Raikou actually has trouble with Rotom too, so Rotom is my go-to switch in. Uh, hopefully I don't switch it on HP Ice because that would be annoying to waste my berry on that, but Rotom can take everything from Raikou barring HP Ice anyway, and I can hit it back really, really hard with Leaf Storm, doing around 60% on Melissa's Assault Vest, and that's where we see now that Raikou is in range. Next Pokemon is Mega Blastoise. With, uh, I have a little bit of a weird EV spread going on here. I really just put a couple of points in speed to outspeed any possible weird speed tiers from his bulkier Pokemon. Blastoise is just here to control entry hazards for Volcarona and fire off some really, really big hits where it can. In particular, Blastoise can come in on Kabutops for mostly free, and it can also come in on Mega Caesar for mostly free. I have to be careful around the Tornadus because Hurricane is still going to hurt a good bit, especially if he's Life Orbed, if he's Scarf, not so much. But uh, I am going to go with Water Pulse here because um, as far as Skull goes, Skull Burn really only helps me out against, he doesn't have that many physical Pokemon. Skull Burn helps me out with the Caesar, 
maybe the tornadoes if it's running um u-turn or superpower for something like magneton and then of course the kabutops and the mill tank so i'm looking if i am going to get hacks in my favor confusion is going to be a little bit more useful here might make him think twice about staying in and i can fire off another hit rain is also going to nicely boost wa uh, water pulse as well doing the equivalent of like basically throwing up choice specs on my blastoise uh, dark pulse is just there for a solid neutral coverage against its whole team i can almost spam dark pulse except for my choke and my choke can't take a water pulse so uh, blastoise is going to be really nice for those now the reason i have max special attack and then a mix of hp and defense is really just to take those physical hits better. I am worried about life or Kabutops, uh, just because Kabutops could be a problem if I let, say, um, Rotom go down or something like that, because Rotom can take a hit from Kabutops as well, barring an X-Scissor. Uh, but nothing else can really take on Kabutops. Uh, I could bring in Archomp, I suppose. But uh, I don't want to be in that position, basically. And after I get a little bit of passive damage on it, then Weavile can KO it with the knockoff once again. Now, my last win condition here, so we have Garchomp, Volcarona, and Weavile as our main win conditions. Volcarona is going to be carrying the Pasho Berry. And that is primarily just for the uh, the chance to set up. Mainly, if Kingdra uses uh, Draco Meteor, we're bringing in Volcarona and going for Quiver Dance. If something goes down, and Mega Caesar is in, we're bringing in Volcarona and going for uh, the uh, Quiver Dance. I do have to be careful with that because Mega Caesar does have access to Aerial Ace, which will hurt Volcarona. But really, I only have enough speed here so that after two Quiver Dances, I will outspeed um, Max Speed Kingdra in the rain. So, uh, really, that's the only speed tier I need to hit. Um, the rest is just pumped into HP to better take hits from the likes of Caesar, Tornadus, if it's going for a U turn superpower uh, after two quiver dances his team basically can't do anything about Volcarona and I know he knows that going into this so um, I do need to keep Volcarona relatively healthy but it's a nice switch in on Mega Caesar Tornadus to a lesser extent the uh, mill tank and Machoke just because they struggle to hit it and a lot of them use contact moves so he's risking that burn chance uh, and this is where I kind of had the counterbalance between Blastoise using Scald and Volcarona um, I'd rather have the confusion compacted with the burn here if I do get it. Force in a switch, if it gets stealth rocks up, that damage is going to be adding up really, really quickly. And that's the situation I want here. So that's the team. I'll try to keep this relatively short. Um, and the battle should be coming up here soon. I actually haven't fought it yet. I just got off work. I raced home. Recorded this little 13 minute video. And uh, we're going to get into it here. So, guys, the Internet City Enders are back. Prepare yourselves. Because we're going to start ending people with the Maryland Tor Terrapin. So thank you very much for sticking around. Or if you jumped right to the battle, that's fine too. I didn't end up making any changes to the team that I was going to bring. Kelly did actually not bring what I expected him to bring either. I really didn't expect to see uh, Miltank in this battle. I assumed they had a very good matchup. But, you know, we can deal with that. Everything else, uh, I did have some inkling that he would bring Raikou and Nidhi King Orb a little bit of a toss-up. But uh, Raikou, I guess, makes more sense because of Sneasel's abil uh, Weavile's ability to ice shard it. Now, looking at the matchup here, I was pretty certain he would lead off with either Tornadus, Politoed, or Raikou. And uh, my Rotom could take on all three of those. So I decided to lead off with that as well. Uh, also looking at his team, I was fairly certain that he would have a bulky Politoed and a bulky Miltank, and everything else would be fairly offensive, but uh, we'll find out later on if that isn't necessarily the case, so I will have to play around that as well. Uh, yeah, so let's just get right into this match here, and that way we can at least see what he leads off with. So I do lead off with Rotom, and we see Raikou on his end. I just decided to stay in here and Volt Switch thinking that he would do the same and I would get off a slower Volt Switch, but he uses Hidden Power and pops my Yachi Berry immediately, which sucks. I really didn't think he'd go right for that. He might have also been predicting the switch into Garchomp. If I had just gone for Leaf Storm there, that would have put uh, a good amount of pressure on him actually, or I could have gone for Willowups as well. I'm thinking that he was going to go for another Hidden Power Ice 
or even Volt Switch now, I do go out into Gardevoir. I could have gone out into my Garchomp, but now I was afraid of him predicting that once again. So he goes out into his Tornadus on the Volt Switch. So I just get off some nice free uh, Moonblast damage here. We were actually recreating this because uh, he de he DC'd in the first battle, but we were able to recreate everything pretty for pretty flawlessly here. I just went for Protect to grab some extra um, leftovers, and I also wanted to reveal to him that I had Protect because when people know you have Protect, then maybe you can predict around their predictions of using it. Uh, I did think he was going to go for a U-turn there, but he goes for a knockoff. It's like, uh, no, I wish I hadn't um, protected there because then he would have U-turned and I would have kept my <laughs> leftovers. That's okay, though. I am going to get my health back from the Wish as he goes out into his Caesar. Uh, I know I basically can't stay in here, and I figure he's either going to go for a coverage move or uh, just a U-turn. Because I definitely can't stay in there. So I go out into Blastoise and know that after a wish I can eat up any hit. And he goes for a U-turn. And looking at the damage, I know that he's adamant, but I couldn't tell what attack investment he had. If he were max attack invested, he probably would have done over half to my Blastoise. So I was figuring some type of adamant bulky build. Uh, now with the rain up, that's kind of cool because I did have I did bring um, a rain dish Blastoise, but in the PPO you have to evolve on the first turn. Uh, what originally happened was he U-turned out to his Raiko as I got my wish back, and then um, I he Volt switched to the Politoed, but he did that in a little bit of a wrong order. But it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to rapid spin here in order to let him get the Volt switch damage off that he had initially to put us back in the same position. He does lose a few turns of rain, and uh, that might come into play, but otherwise we're in the same general position. Now I do hit Polito with a Dark Pulse as it comes in, which is great. Uh, I did end up bringing Water Pulse over Scald. I was considering going for it there, trying to get the confusion, but I was also hoping for the flinch chance. And of course, Dark Pulse hits anything that he wants to switch in too. So uh, he is able to Toxic me, and here I thought, okay, you might switch out, but I just went for Dark Pulse again. If I had gone for Water Pulse, I had a chance to one-hit KO the Tornadus in the rain, depending on his spread. Uh, and seeing the damage here, that was a low roll too. So I think I'm thinking that he was a little bit more bulky than I expected him to be on his Tornadus build. So I do take out the Tornadus, but really at the cost of my Blastoise, which is not a good exchange at all. Uh, Blastoise was a great check to his Caesar, uh, less to a lesser extent the um, Kingdra. But uh, on the double down, the delicious, the delicious double down. I go out to Gardevoir as he goes out in the mill tank. I do find out that he has thick fat, so that's nice. If I need to leave store in the mill tank, that is okay, because he won't have Sap Sipper. I just go out to Garchomp to get up my rocks, because I know he's probably going to put his up. I was really considering going out to Volcarona here, but I was about 80% sure that his mill tank had Rock Slide. Otherwise, mill tank is complete setup fodder for Volcarona. He goes for Earthquake there, probably predicting a switch. Uh, also, probably not wanting to touch my Garchomp. Here he goes for Rock Slide, probably trying to get a flinch. Uh, but I just get off a plus two life or Earthquake from an Adamant Garchomp, and he still lives it. Which means I take an extra hit of Earthquake, I can take an extra hit of Life Orb. And I was actually quite annoyed that he lived. I did not think he was going to be living. I, I, that's exactly why I brought Adamant Garchomp, is so I wouldn't have to do that. I took so much extra damage because of that situation. Anyways, though, he goes back out into his Tornadus, and I can't really risk the uh, the possibility of Hidden Power Ice here. I was really tempted to be very aggressive and go out into my Weavile immediately, but he could also uh, go for coverage moves there. Um, and Weavile would have been a very aggressive switch, but I was also assuming this whole time that he wasn't running max speed on his Kingdra. So while Weavile would have been a very aggressive switch, uh, I thought I still needed it for the Kingdra, and I actually kind of needed Gardevoir to go down to give my Volcarona a chance to set up. With two Quiver Dances, even if he is running max speed on his Kingdra, I can still outspeed it. What I didn't account for is the scenario that comes up here, because I basically put myself, if I play chess, in a little bit of a check position. I went for one Quiver Dance as he switched into Politoed, and I have my Paschal Berry intact, and I thought I could live a Scald or a Hydro Pump even from Politoed. At max, they would do right around 20 to 30 HP. 
after the Paschal Berry and the plus two special defense. But he goes for a waterfall. And guys, that sucks. Like, I, how on earth could I expect him to go for a waterfall right there? And so that means I lose my Volcarona. And with that, there goes my chance of the sweep. Uh, I could have just gone straight for Giga Drain and KO'd the Politoed. But it turns out his Kingdra actually had Waterfall as well. So all of my planning and trying to get special EVs to specifically live specific situations was for naught. Because I didn't think he'd bring Waterfall. He even brought Waterfall on attack reducing nature, Timid, and Calm Politoed. So it was like, ah, uh, it was still enough to KO me. And he wasn't even using Hydro Pump, he was using Surf, which I definitely could have lived with my Paschal Berry and plus two special defense. Just very, very annoying that he prepped so well for that situation. I, I just didn't see that coming. And I basically get swept by Kingdra because of it. Uh, now on the off chance that I did go for Giga Drain against the, um, the Politoed, that would have KO'd it. But then Kingdra would have come in and still been able to outspeed me. But then we're in a position where as he goes for a waterfall, I could have switched out into uh, Garchomp or to my Rotom and tried to play around with Life Orb and Rough Skin shenanigans uh, to put him in range for a uh, Ice Shard from my Kingdra. But that's still a really, really tough scenario because I need to have Rotom available to take on the Caesar. So as soon as Rotom goes down, then Caesar is still able to clean up. Uh, just really, really difficult to play around that in the end. But in the end, I did enjoy the battle a lot. It was a lot of fun, and it's always fun battling under the radar. But now this means that the Eternity Enders start the league off with a loss, which kind of sucks. Uh, I was I prepped for this a lot. I even bred several Pokemon that I didn't end up using because I was running so many practice scenarios and. Blah. This, though, what is nice is that this really, really spurs me for next week's matchup, which is actually up against the Don Fanatic, Jack of the Norwich Skitty. That's going to be an intense week two matchup. I will definitely have to prep a lot there because he has, I, for some reason, Skarmory gives me a lot of trouble in league matchups. So he's he has that mega glade skarmory goodness going on there that we have to figure out how to deal with in the meantime thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know if you like the little miniature team builder beforehand or if you like that in a separate video and having a shorter batter video either way i'm open to suggestions thank you for watching and i hope you have a great week i'll talk to you later bye bye